Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disown. In this video, I will be comparing the 2019 ASUS TUF 505DU against its replacement, the TUF A15. Strangely, they are both $1,099 on Amazon, and I am telling you right off the bat not to buy the TUF 505DU for that price. In my opinion, $600 should be its max price, and we will see why in a bit. Spec-wise, they seem quite similar. The big difference on paper is the change from the 4-core 3758H CPU to the 8-core Ryzen 7 4800H. It's got faster 3200MHz RAM, it also has a faster 144Hz panel with adaptive sync and an option for a much larger 90Wh battery. When I reviewed the TUF 505, the design reminded me of a laptop from the 90s. The plastic lid just didn't look appealing at all. The lid on the A15 is aluminium, and although it still screams gamer, it does look a lot better in my opinion. The keyboard decks on both are plastic, with the A15 having a brushed finish, which I did find doesn't show as many fingerprints. The arrow keys have been moved to below the shift key on the A15, and both models uh, key to key brightness can be controlled via the arrow keys. But in the A15, you also have the option to switch between the various aura lighting effects. Both models have the AWSD keys coloured white, but the TUF 505 does have white paint around the keys, which I do like. Both trackpads are made of plastic and use precision drivers, but the A15 has separate mouse buttons, which I personally prefer. Above the function keys, both systems have some air intakes. And on the left hand side, the only difference is the A15 has a USB-C port, which has DisplayPort 1.4 and is G-Sync enabled, so if you use an external monitor. And on the right hand side, the TUF 505DU had no ports at all, whilst on the A15 there was a single USB 2 Type A port. The A15 is also 6 oz lighter without the 180 watt power brick, but with the bricks, the uh, A15 is 5 pounds uh, 5 ounces versus 6 pounds 4 ounces on the TUF 505. Both bottom panels are made of plastic, and ASUS blocks off much of the air intakes on both. This seems to be a trend for them, and supposedly it does help cool other components on the motherboard. My A15 has the 48 watt hour battery, and as such, it has a 2.5 inch bay. If you go for the 90 watt hour battery, you will have just the two M.2 slots. The TUF 505 only had one M.2 slot, and under that was the Wi Fi card. I must admit, I didn't remove the M.2 drive on the A15, so its Wi Fi card is more than likely under there as well. The cooling system appears identical between the two, with two shared heat pipes, one dedicated one for the GPU, and three heat sinks. Here is the chassis thermals for the TUF 505 on the left and the A15 on the right. Both are pretty decent, the A15 is slightly cooler, but they both do a good job. They both must use the exact same fan, since with both under load using the turbo mode, they were both at 48 decibels, which is pretty quiet. The speakers, however, are definitely loud on the outgoing TUF 505, 76 decibels versus 70 decibels. As for their screens, the ASUS A15 has a 144Hz panel with adaptive sync, with a free sync range of 48Hz to 144Hz, and indeed it does stop tearing when gaming. But its colour gamut and brightness were poor, with 62% of sRGB, a contrast ratio of 890 to 1, and a peak brightness of 274 nits. Now at 50% brightness, this dropped to only 78 nits, and indeed, the A15 screen is much less bright at lower settings than the TUF 505, making it much harder to see in brighter light, and I recall its clarity was also worse. The TUF 505 also had the same color gamut and contrast as the A15, so neither are really good for photo or video work. Both panels also did poorly in my ghosting test. They look pretty similar to me, and much worse than better quality 144Hz panels I have used. In game I didn't notice the ghosting, but that's not to say that everybody won't, and many have complained about the slow response time. I don't have the tools to measure that, but the reports that the G14 is 30 milliseconds could be a good indicator for what these are as well. As for their 720p webcams, they are both located at the top of the display, and both are reasonably clear, and their microphones do pick up speech well. Let's look at CPU performance. Now it's not going to be a huge surprise that the 8-core 4800H is going to beat the 4-core 3758H. Not only does it have 50% more cores, but it has a single core boost of 4.2GHz versus 4GHz on the 3750H. 
so in multi-threaded tasks, we should expect just over a 50% performance boost. And in Cinebench R20, we see a massive 145% increase. This is insane. But this is a fairly short test, so let's look at a, a video encode using Handbrake. This is the time taken to do the encode, and the Tough A15 does it 63% quicker. That's more in line with what we would expect, but given these systems are the same price, you have to ask yourself why even buy the 3758 laptop. In the TimeSpy benchmark, just looking at the CPU performance, the 4800H is 147% faster. Wow. Here is Battlefield 5 using Ultra Settings, playing a multiplayer game on the Rotterdam map with the A15 on top and the Tough 505 on the bottom. The difference in frame rate is huge. The 1660 Ti on the Tough 505 is boosting higher, but it is only being 50 to 60% utilized versus 97% on the A15. Now Asus did tell me that the slower RAM is to blame for this. So at older settings, the A15 is 56% higher, and this margin increases as we lower quality settings, suggesting that as the CPU becomes more important, it just can't feed the GPU fast enough. Look at the minimum frame rates as well. The minimum frame rate on the A15 is even faster than the average on the Tough 505. Here is Overwatch using Epic settings. This time, the 1660 Ti on the Tough 505 is being utilized just fine. It's boosting less than the A15, but not enough to show the huge difference in frame rate. We are generally talking over 70% improvement for the A15, and again, minimum frame rates are much higher. Now, this is the type of thing we would see with single channel RAM, but my Tough 505 had two sticks. On to Shadow of the Tomb Raider using higher settings. The A15 is still ahead, but not by as much. But even with a similar GPU utilization and a higher boost clock, the Tough 505 just cannot keep up. At higher settings, we see a 26% differential, which gets larger as we lower quality settings. In fact, the Tough 505 hardly sees any benefit at all when we lower those quality settings. In PUBG, the Tough A15 holds an advantage in clock rate, but this time the Tough 505 does do better with its fair minimum frame rates. And when we lower quality settings, the Tough 505 actually closes the gap. So yeah, the same 1099 price tag makes it zero sense really to go for the Asus Tough 505 over the A15. The CPU is much slower and it cannot sufficiently feed the GTX 1660 Ti to achieve the frame rates you are paying for. Even lowering quality settings doesn't help much. The screen is pretty much the same. Although you do trade a brighter screen at lower brightness settings for the adaptive sync on the A15. Its speakers are louder though, but still, that's not enough for me to recommend a tough 505. I said in my review that it sucked, and now with the A15 out, it just sucks more. Thank you for watching, and if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing, as I have more AMD laptop content coming. Bye now.